Now, the algae that you're studying, where does it give us a sense of where it lives in the Gulf of Mexico? What strata of, of water will be? Um, a lot of ours comes from the 60 to 90 meters depth. And there's pinnacles off the coast of Louisiana. And basically, it's there's salt domes, basically. So the weight from the Mississippi pushes down on this salt, and it's sort of like a plastic. So it pushes up. And when it's pushing up, it provides an area for our algae to grow on. And then the rotoliths also grow and add to it. And it's a so you see, like those, those salt domes, mm-hmm. you know, like you have in Jefferson Island, those are the ones that are being pushed up in the uh, terrestrial environment. But you have all those big canyons and so those hot banks way down at the bottom. We have, uh, so that's our area, 60, 90, 45 to 90 meters. That's uh, the algae we, we, stu- we study predominantly. V- v- uh, fascinating. You don't find them anywhere else. Um, so uh, then there are some other areas where you have all those uh, big corals, like uh, 500 meter depth and things like that. And how are they going to be affected? So those lofi- uh, lobelia uh, corals, different from the coral reefs. You see, we have, we don't know how that is all going to be affected. Oh, it's so it's, it's 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 really frightening. A- and when you talk about the tip of the iceberg, we had spoken with Daryl Felder, uh, former head of the biology department, uh, earlier in the year about this amazing uh, collection of books on the biodiversity of the Gulf. Uh, I think the one book that he was responsible yeah. for was <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was uh, like six inches wide. Yeah. It was, and and that was just one of I think eight volumes mm-hmm. of uh, cataloging every single organism mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. from the tiniest to the mm-hmm, largest uh, mm-hmm. in the Gulf. So you do have an amazing baseline and I know yeah. you all are all invested in knowing how this is going to affect them all. Mm-hmm. I want to tell people who are just tuning in right now uh, turning on their radios or computers my guests are Dr. Suzanne Frederick who is a professor of biology here at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette and two of her students who work in the laboratory where they work on seaweeds, uh, Shana Kale and uh, Will Schmidt who is um, a postdoc he uh, finished his uh, doctoral work here at at UL Lafayette and they just recently went down to Port Fouchon, collected algae and have brought it back to their laboratory and are starting to work on it. So when you bring a collection in like that, how long do you work with it? How long does it take you to make some kind of, um, I don't know, decision about how it's been affected? How long does it does a sample last for you? Well, it all depends, eh? yes. uh, because mm-hmm. you can look every student, every member, are going to have a different take on the dalga. Well, you mentioned that Shana works m- on the molecular exactly. level. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, someone else may look at the morphology. Someone else may look at maybe the physiology. So, it all depends how interesting it is for a particular problem, a question we want to answer. And sometimes we just wait, we may collect, and only years afterwards we study them. Because uh, you put it into the context then that is needed a couple of years from now. So it all depends. The important thing is we have it so that we can access it when something like this happens. You see, we have some algae that we haven't been able to uh, study yet. But now we will t- uh, be able to take them out of their um, containers and so and be able to compare with what's happening now. Mm. So it's always good to have all the material and then... Uh, Sometimes even yeah. uh, years later, we have later. backlog mm-hmm. uh, that we don't directly have to work up, but then eventually um, we we get to them, and right. that's the important thing. And well, then we compare, we go to museums, muse- like at the Smithsonian, to make sure that we know exactly what we have. And cross-reference we samples exactly. and compare yeah. them. So um, it's... We go all over the world for those things. Mm, the patience of scientists. Uh, you mentioned that, uh, again, you all have applied for an M- NSF rapid response grant, uh, you and Daryl Felder. Is that something you'll be working on, Will? If, yes. if that's yes, gotten in definitely. Shana, you'll awesome. be around as well? Yes, ma'am. Yes. You're going to be staying to do graduate mm-hmm. work here at the yes, university. Uh, with a, I guess you were going off to Maine to work on some other? Right, algae? just to go farther with it and just see, you know, the more essentials of algae. Mm-hmm. All right, you'll bring back yeah, some knowledge Yeah, it's part of another NSF grant, the Tree of Life, the Red Algal Tree of Life. So we got a little um, a grant for uh, REU, for the research for undergraduates. And um, Sheena was selected to then uh, also interact with other students and so, and to learn more about the, about the red algae in a different environment. 
Well, congratulations. Yeah. And you'll bring that knowledge back here and yeah. continue working uh, on exactly. what's happening now in the mm-hmm. Gulf. Mm-hmm. So when you go out to collect algae normally, do you always go to the beach or do you take boats out into the water? How do you... Both everything and anything mm-hmm. you can think of. We um, scuba dive, we collect off the beach in the drift. I mean, we go anywhere. We, we dredge. Go dredge yes. we, we collect algae with the ROV. So it all depends which situation, uh, what is the habitat, uh, and then we adapt to the habitat. We, ad- we adapt to the algae. In order to work in your laboratory, does everyone have to be certified in scuba diving? No. No, no, because some uh, some people do not are not so interested in the deep water algae. If you just want to snorkel, uh, that's fine too. You see, it, it it all depends on your research material. If you because we we are from the opinion, if you want to work on a certain um, group and it grows deep, then you do everything to go and get them. So then. Of course, we're going to scuba dive. You see, it's like secondary. Okay, well, I'm, uh, I'm looking at Will as smiling yeah. and nodding. Are you certified in scuba diving? Yes, yeah. I am certified. Okay, so <laughs> you go down where your algae is. Exactly, we just follow mm-hmm. follow the algae. <laughs> all right. Oh, I can think of all kinds of movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm also thinking like algae busters. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Call in the team when we need to find out what's going on <laughs> exactly, down there. Yeah. Um, again, just to remind people, we are talking about um, a very particular collection that you all just made recently at Port Fouchon uh, in order to bring back some of the algae that has been affected by the oil spill, some deep water algae and some algae closer to the shore. So you have that in your lab right now and you all are beginning to work on it. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned, Suzanne, it is a process. And I know so many of us are all impatient to understand, you know, exactly what the consequences are and what we can expect. And it's hard to hear the word years yeah yeah Um, because you see it was all dead it's all like a clump Mm -hmm. what we got from the offshore algae it's Mm -hmm. uh it's very very sad because like even the sargassums those those were actually brown seaweeds you see them sometimes floating if you go out with a boat and Mm -hmm. those masses and masses of those sargassums 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 sea is named after Mm -hmm. it and it's like a little floating islands they're floating islands that support all different wildlife uh, a crab and a little fish and other algae. So if that all dies, every th- and th- you see sometimes girls and so n- uh, rest on them. It's nice little platforms like that. So if that all dies, you know, it's everything. No you see the problem is everything live. else. Uh, it affects everything else. And I, I just hope if something positive can come out of that whole thing, that uh, the to know that the base of the food chain, the algae are so important because you don't hear much talk about it in the news. No. Eh? What you see, the pelicans and the... Which is... A, right, our, our heart home. doesn't necessarily go out to a clump of... To a clump algae. of uh, algae, like some... That's Oh, that's that stuff that um, basically it, solves the beach, you know, right. so... Uh, I know it does for y'all, though. When you see it, you, you weep. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they are so important uh, mm-hmm. to get everything else go, uh, go on healthily. So that's what uh, we want to... To, um, uh, to understand. Yeah. Now, uh, how long will it be before you hear about the grant? Well, uh, I hope it's soon. It's a rapid, yeah. uh, rapid. That's why it's called. We know we should get a response pretty mm-hmm. fast. So, uh, I've been checking out their website, and but so far, it's all the the rapids have been given to people who study scientists who study oceanography, mm-hmm. I like the bacterial, the deep waters. Not so much yet the, in the evolutionary. Mm-hmm. Uh, department you know the, the so hopefully mm, we're going to hear soon exactly uh, well, well the, uh, NSF funded us to do all the trips before to launch all the expeditions so it would make sense I think to you know to continue, to continue your work, yes. because we have all that those right. the previous knowledge and, and just a reminder to our listeners NSF is National Science Foundation yeah. and uh, which has funded so many of your grants yeah, as well yeah. well um, perhaps if you all will agree to come back uh, once you've been doing more research after you get the grant and have gone out into the Gulf uh, and yeah when we get when, with the boat we can come back and yes mm-hmm. and let us know yeah. uh, uh, about images and, and knowledge that we, we won't we're not getting you know again um, obviously very heartrending pictures mm-hmm. of well, some of the algae we put on uh, on our YouTube site all right maybe you can tell people about where they can uh, go to I see think it. it's uh, YouTube nemastoma. Nemastoma. Uh, dot com slash nemastoma n-e-m-e-s-t-o-m-a nemastoma 
It's an, it's an alga name, so it just <laughs> popped up. Uh. So yeah. we show a little bit of the algae there in okay. the lab. They came to uh, interview us. All right. The local uh, TV came to interview And I guess maybe if they would Google your name also, Suzanne Frederick. Yeah, on, the, on uh, YouTube, they can, they can Google uh, UL Lafayette Algae and they're going to get to it. Whenever. All right. That yeah. might be easier yeah. than <laughs> the other word. Exactly. UL Lafayette Algae. And, oh, uh, yeah, if you can just do some keywords, algae, right. oil spill, pot fourchon, you're going to get to it. Okay, and find out more. And also, um, there's a website on the UL Lafayette uh, website for the, the laboratory where yeah, you all you work. Yeah, you can Google it. You can see that. a few yeah. things there also. Well, again, to remind people, uh, my guests have been Dr. Suzanne Frederick, a professor of biology here at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Two of the students who work in her laboratory, uh, Shana Colley, mm -hmm. who just graduated uh, an undergraduate here at UL Lafayette, and Will Schmidt, who's a postdoc here at the university, all in the laboratory working with algae right now. And uh, again, we look forward to having you back to let us know more about what you all discover. Thank you. Okay, thank you very thank much. You.